Uh, good evening. Welcome to the Canby City Council regular meeting for August 7th, 2013. Uh, we're actually reconvening from our uh, work session. Uh, if you'll please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance in a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So stay standing for a moment of silence, please. Great, thank you. Please be seated. Uh, as I said, we were reconvening the meeting from uh, an earlier work session. Uh, we were getting uh, educated on um, potential model ordinance for some telecommunications pieces for the city. and. Uh, I thought it was a very good conversation, and we'll hear more of that, I think, in the future. Um, so we'll move into communications. I have none, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Uh, first point of the evening for citizen input and community announcements. Uh, if you'd like to address us, we have these fabulous little yellow cards if you want to fill that out. And the first one this evening is Kevin Hayes. Kevin, if you want to come on up. City Council members, thank you for letting me come to speak to you tonight. I've uh, met with a couple of you over the past uh, couple of weeks. I'm a television producer from Nashville, and we are here actually in the process of getting ready to do a television show in the city of Canby. The reason why I'm here tonight is to actually give you kind of an insight as to what's going on so that you're prepared for what we're about to do with Canby. Uh, the show is actually a show that I did in Nashville that CMT slated to pick up in the year 2009. It was a show called uh, Indie Back Roads. And what we're doing here is Nashville was more of a, a country side of the television show. What we wanted to do is give a chance to be able to bring in independent musicians that are uh, not country. And this is a great area for that. And the show basically takes independent musicians, three of them per television show, sits them in a round, which is done in Nashville, and then gives them a chance to play their songs all together, having never played before together, never having even met. Creates an incredible evening, a wonderful uh, time of entertainment. And the reason why I'm here tonight is to actually invite you guys to the show. We are needing to fill the audience with people who are uh, there to actually watch the show, have a chance of possibly getting on television. The show is this Saturday night. Uh, I know it is last minute and uh, wanted to at least come before you guys to give you that opportunity. Uh, because it is an invite only to the show, I have tickets for you guys which I'll give to you. That way you can be able to uh, get in the door with that. If you're able to make it, the ticket uh, gives you a chance to bring a spouse or, or a friend or uh, however that will work out. Now. Three weeks ago, we had auditions for the show. We had close to 20 people show up. And uh, actually, Councilmember Hensley was there on our uh, board of judges to kind of go over who was there. Uh, I think some of you probably got an email that she uh, had sent out since she's not able to be here tonight. Uh, she had an incredible time. We really appreciate her being there. Uh, great input as well. She had. Uh, a lot of fun being able to help us decide who would fit for this pilot show. Now the goal with this show is to create what we call the pilot, the first episode. Then what we'll do is we will pitch that show in two forms. One, either to the networks that are interested. We have three networks who are interested in doing it. This is not a local show. This is an international possibility but is more likely a national show that will hit uh, the networks. Uh, what we're going to do is look at two options. One, we can pitch the actual pilot itself once it's completed in about two months to the networks. The other option that we are weighing as well is to bring on private investors to help fund the first season. What's cool about that is the city of Canby can come together to be a part of a show that we then pitch as a whole for 12 episodes to a network. It's a great opportunity for Tan City of Canby to come together. We're very excited. We've got a crew of about 15 that are going to be transforming the cafe across the street, the place to be. Pam Thomas is very excited. We've been working with her for about three weeks now, four weeks on pre-production. And uh, it was actually 
uh, was walking by one night the cafe and saw her poster on the wall and thought this is great opportunity a lot of people have been asking me why Canby why are you choosing Canby I actually grew up here this is my hometown this is where I've come back to and so I have that passion to be able to help the city of Canby out so I'm excited uh, my team that is on board with me is excited as well and uh, so I've got these tickets I'd love to give to you guys if you can make it great if you can't I understand it's last minute but we would absolutely love to have you great Thank you, yes. Kevin. Yeah. Thank you. I know some of you have them already. Yes. yes. There you are. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, the cool kids already have them. Yeah, yeah, well, someone just changed yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. No, thank you. Thank well, you so good luck much. to you on your uh, yeah. efforts. Thank Thanks. you. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Thank good luck. Thank you, thank you Kevin. Back. Yeah. All right, any other citizen input and community announcements? All right, seeing none. Uh, moving to mayor's business. Uh, start with the um, first bit of my business uh, before I get into some fun activities going on is uh, I would like to pitch to the council to get a consensus um, on moving forward, or pardon me, providing direction to staff to start working on the Third Avenue Civic Center slash library project uh, to be able to present to uh, the URA uh, probably at our October agency meeting. Uh, so direction, just looking, you know, looking into property, looking at uh, two-story option, uh, what cost would be, I think, uh, with what capital we have uh, available, based on uh, what we have bonded for already. Uh, looking at different, if a phased approach is a possibility. Um, like I said, current funding and options, reloc relocation needs of staff, etc. Uh, other renovation costs, um, following up with county on the county dollars that um, we have or have had designated for us for the library uh, capital improvements, and then uh, any action steps and decision points um, that we may need for for that piece. So I'm just looking for um, mm -hmm. consensus that we have direct staff to be able to get going on that piece of it so we don't lose any momentum from previous conversations. Well, Mr. Mayor, I'd, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, give staff uh, permission to move forward on that and do an exhaustive study on that, uh, on those options with your direction. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I'd like to second that. I, th I think you covered it uh, well, Mr. Mayor, um, using existing funds and uh, uh, existing properties that we have, any sort of creative uh, things that, that you can do and um, since we may have a smaller footprint than what the Second Avenue was, um, I, I think it's reasonable to ask for what a second story would look like. So for me, I think you've covered all the bases there. So thank you for putting that together. Thank you, sir. You guys are Likewise. Thank you. Good. Are we OK on that there, Greg? And yeah, you got to. Do, is a, do, by consensus, or do we you do, do, made do a motion? motion. Oh, all right. a motion on the floor. Okay. And we have a second, okay. right? All right. All right. So uh, I guess we have a motion to move with Third Avenue and a second by Councilor Ryder. So, oh, no. Councilor Parker. Sorry, Parker. Councilor Parker. Pardon me. Uh, those in favor of that? Uh, aye. 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 All right. Aye. I'll clarify. You said look at Third Avenue. I think it was to look at options. Is that what you were thinking? Third Avenue and options. Uh, uh, using the existing facility. Yeah, using oh, the, using the right. existing, yeah. existing yeah, options with the current yeah existing okay. facility and around you know yeah, yeah okay. for additional pro property pieces are needed. You're just starting to create that that game plan for us. Okay. And the decision points I think are the big pieces coming forward. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. it would be my interest not to necessarily limit staff on their creative view on that. that okay. That I, I'm I'm willing to concede that <clears throat> it appears the majority of the council does want to move. The, have have the facility on Third Avenue, but what configuration and exactly where that is, I'd I'd like to, for staff to be able to to, to uh, have some flexibility at least in their initial research. That's my question, okay. basically. I think that that's okay. what's been moved and and passed. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you, gentlemen. Um, so moving into couple of other mayoral pieces the city hosted a 
a summit for uh, businesses um, in the advanced manufacturing metals and machinery side of our uh, economy in our city. There was a summit uh, that Renata put together. It was well attended and Jerry Turner from Pioneer Pump facilitated that and uh, we had some great dialogue. A couple of topics that were discussed were uh, workforce, uh, needs for it, skill sets, etc., transportation, and what the city can do to help um, uh, with, you know, uh, having more meetings like this and um, just kind of help move the move those kinds of uh, businesses into more of those businesses into our community. Uh, and then also the uh, Jamie is part of Main Street uh, put together a downtown uh, parking task force meeting, and we have a little parking task force that's working on um, some of the parking we'll say issues challenges that were raised by a number of the businesses great turnout fantastic participation uh, by the businesses that showed up uh, I was very uh, very pleased to see that and and the and very good dialogue and J Jamie has a ton of support from the businesses that were in attendance to make that happen so uh, some good things happening on that end uh, and that concludes my <coughs> Uh, fun activities. Um, we will start with Councilor Coleman for your report, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, since our uh, big vacation we had, um, since our last meeting, um, I attended the Planning Commission meeting where they uh, discussed the Fred Meyer fuel station. <coughs> they heard the arguments uh, for the project and against. Very thorough presentation by both attorneys uh, who did a very good job. It was actually, uh, it was fun to watch. <laughs> And I have to commend our uh, Planning Commission for handling a very difficult topic and doing it in a very professional manner. Uh, at the end of the presentations and citizen input, the Planning Commission approved the station to be moved to the Council. So do you know what date that will come up for? First meeting in September. Okay. Yeah. And so also... The fourth, Kim. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thanks. Um, also, um, attended a Canby Rodeo meeting, um, getting ready for a terrific fair and rodeo. Um, and today's Canby Herald's a really good resource. There's an insert in there that tells all the activities going on on each day. Um, very thorough, uh, talking about entertainment, food, everything. And also, if you uh, go online to uh, Canby Event Center, uh, you can get the same information. And I noticed also in the paper today that the uh, the cat will be running transport uh, folks from the Fred Meyer complex over to the mm -hmm. fairgrounds and the other hours there and everything. Um, also this week attended the chamber luncheon at the fairgrounds which was very well attended and um, you know I've been in other communities and I just have to say this chamber is fantastic mm -hmm. the support for the community. Um, and also since our last meeting um, I'm the liaison to the traffic safety and since our last meeting we've had two meetings and I'd like to ask our secretary uh, Robert Backstrom to come up and share a little bit about some of the things we're doing there it's pretty exciting thank you Clint yes um, I'm on the uh, traffic safety commission it's been uh, meeting now for two months I was on it several years ago for many years, and then uh, it dissolved during uh, Mayor Thompson's regime, and it was never restarted until this year. And uh, it's an honor to be on it, and it's quite exciting. And uh, we're obligated to uh, do some things that are controlled by the city's own uh, guidelines and requirements of that committee. And then we also have some discretion to initiate some projects and some studies of our own but we're currently following the directive of Mayor Hudson and Greg to number one, get going on the problems with the north side bypass, but that's only one issue that we're dealing with and we're also working uh, to uh, maybe be of some help for the schools and other neighborhoods around town and other issues that we see, but it's very young and very early and we have a great group of very talented, intelligent people and somebody who's really skilled with a spreadsheet, and we've got that Dan Leishner going out there already, and uh, so that's the way it is, and and we're we're excited and happy to have it up and running again, and we hope to be have an impact on town. Bob, would you share with with us when we meet and uh, yes, where we meet? Yes, we meet the first Friday of each month at the shop 
office on North Redwood Street Public Works office at 8.30 in the morning. And we meet until 10 o'clock. And then at 10 o'clock, Clint leaves, <coughs> and the rest of us stand around and talk about him. <laughs> no, it's a great, great opportunity, and we wish all of you could come. Greg's been there every time and been a huge help to us. So and if you ever want to drop in, feel well, free. Well, Mr. Backstrom, I, I, I doubt if I would be able to add much uh, to that, but let me just say that in the two and a half years I've been on the council, the only time that we deal with issues like this are when they're problems, that we don't deal with them from a policy standpoint, a system standpoint, or um, and certainly not a citizen standpoint. Uh, so I'm really happy that we're back in the business of taking a look at this and um, look forward to hearing some of your recommendations because uh, one of the keys to livability in a city uh, is, is how well people, freight, and, and automobiles and bikes can move around and be safe. And uh, as Canby grows, uh, your work is going to become a legacy project. Yeah, and the neighborhood uh, associations have met, and we had some guests. The mayor was there, and Mr. Ryder was there, and Tracy Hensley was there, and uh, they're all very concerned. Just for a little background, and uh, I don't mean to stay here too long, but there's a, a good chunk of traffic that comes through town on the north side and never has nothing to do with the city. They're bypassing Canby. They're coming from the north. They come down Territorial all the way to the end, they go down Birch, and then they head out west on Knightsbridge Road. There's like 3,000 vehicles a day by the city's own count that does that. And we're guessing at maybe two-thirds of them aren't can be citizens. So they wear out our streets, they cause disruption in the neighborhood, noise, danger. The livability aspect on those streets is horrible, and the people are really getting to the boiling point and they're happy to know that we are looking into it. It's kind of a relief valve for some of the citizens. Yeah. They're looking forward to some solutions. But there are other problems besides that. Don't get me wrong, we're not going to focus only on that. Well, thank you, sir, for that. I thank you very much. You. Yes, sir. I think uh, this coming meeting, the first in the September, they're looking at changing that, aren't they? Isn't there going to the second Friday? And I haven't heard from everybody yet, but so far that's what we're thinking of doing because of that short week and people are gone. Yeah. And I think I uh, wouldn't put the schedule probably on our website and so people could check if they would like to attend. We got a great uh, opening uh, coverage from the Herald yeah. front yeah. page. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bob. Mm -hmm. That's all I have, Mr. Reed. Thank you, sir. Pastor Dale. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, likewise attended the chamber uh, luncheon with the rodeo court was able to take my daughters this time and they were able to visit with the royalty they enjoyed that and then our esteemed city administrator told them that there was not adequate dessert compensation at the lunch and that daddy should take him to Dairy Queen so Dairy Queen thanks our city administrator as well triple berry Julius's like they're it. a new discovery good they're very good <laughs> it was a good time and encourage everybody uh, along with Clint uh, we'll see you at the fair in the rodeo yeah, and absolutely. if you're looking for reserved seating at the rodeo go online to get your tickets great way to do that. On the Canby utility front, uh, BPA has finalized its every other year power increase. Uh, they expect a 9% increase in wholesale power rates and that's coupled with an 11% increase in transmission cost. And so Canby Utility is starting to fold that into their rate case. Just want to assure the public that does not translate into a 9% increase in our power bills. BPA power is only a component of Canby Utilities operations. But stay tuned for that as Canby Utility proceeds with their rate planning. And that concludes, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Councilor Dale, or partner, pardon me. The, um, uh, first of all, a, a shout out to uh, Joan Monin and the Wild Hare. Uh, one of the best things uh, we can do for businesses is bring in fresh dollars from outside of the area and uh, several thousand people came uh, to her hair fest uh, and from my observation it was very well managed uh, so uh, thank you Joan for the economic uh, boost uh, this past weekend um, the one thing that I'll mention is a meeting that uh, I went to on Saturday uh, it was the uh, picnic at Locust Street Park 
from Bridging Cultures, a group that I'm involved with to bring together the Hispanic and Anglo communities. And what's neat is that I've been going to this enough now that, that I actually know some people and they, they're, they're starting to talk to me about uh, their experiences with the city. And um, heard a couple stories about communication problems with uh, the police. And uh, some things we can do something about, so that some things we can't, involving larger immigration issues that are beyond our control. But I certainly think there's a way that we can improve communication and do some outreach. So if there's no objection from, from uh, the council, I'd like to work with uh, our city administrator and the mayor and, and the police chief and see if we can't figure out some sort of forum or communication vehicle so that uh, uh, at least people are heard, and um, they feel like someone's listening to them. So that's that's the uh, <clears throat> one report that I have. And finally, about uh, Jamie, uh, our Main Street manager, and the parking uh, committee. That is not an easy job. <laughs> I've I've been involved with that in the past, and it's it's it is not an easy job. <coughs> it's already having payoffs. I have seen businesses who who advertise their businesses on the cars, no longer parking next to their businesses, parking way far away. <coughs> so uh, way to go, Jamie. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, sir. Councilor Ryder. Mr. Mayor, um, as liaison to the uh, Canby Area Transit, um, I want to say first of all that uh, it's good to be back after the first two weeks in July and vacation. And then we ha came back and there were two weeks that we didn't have any meetings. So it's seems like it's been a long time away but uh, during that time was able to uh, uh, attend the uh, Canby Area Transit uh, board meeting and uh, there was uh, a good participation we uh, got to uh, hear about the their plans for their move out to Wilco uh, for their administrative and I guess for the buses and uh, different vehicle places where they're going to keep their vehicles and uh, they're planning on moving in uh, once I guess we have the second reading tonight mm -hmm. um, uh, in October November and uh, so they're really looking forward to that uh, also they uh, mentioned that uh, Jake Allen uh, won a free pass for the month of June I believe it was and uh, this is a, an ongoing event that happens every month, and somebody's fortunate enough to be able to get a ride for a whole month. That's great. And um, also, they mentioned that uh, during the uh, Clackamas County Fair time, the event from the 13th through the 17th, they'll be running a shuttle from uh, Fred Myers uh, to the fairgrounds, and there will be a $1 charge. Uh, although they'll be apparently giving out some tokens that'll uh, help those that uh, possibly need it. And um, they will not be running on Sunday. So I um, want to, and I guess this is a correction to some of the media here in town that had said it was going to be free and uh, that they were going to be running on Sunday. And so we want that clarification. So Excellent. thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, with that, move into the consent agenda. Mr. Mayor, I move to approve the July 17, 2013 <coughs> City Council regular meeting minutes and a change of ownership liquor license for the Mini Chef restaurant and lounge. I'll second that. Thank you, sir. Motion made by uh, Councillor Dale, second by Councillor Coleman to approve the July 17, 2013 City Council regular meeting minutes and a change of ownership liquor license for the Mini Chef Restaurant and Lounge. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Passes 4-0. All right. Uh, moving into resolutions and ordinances. Kim. Okay, the first item we have is Resolution 1171. This is adopting the City Council values and goals. Great. Thank you, Kim. Um, so. Uh, just as a reference for uh, everyone out here in the audience in TV land, uh, council met uh, several months back with the city manager and we brought in some professional facilitators uh, to help assist us in 
talking about our, our vision, um, uh, our, our goals and our values, and uh, great conversation. And these are, they're broad um, and far reaching, and that's intentional so that staff can come in and fill in underneath the appropriate action items and um, touch points that need to happen with those. Um, have had um, some changes um, recommended already by some of the council and there was a question raised in which we'll get into those so um, the first off the question that was raised was um, if we should wait till we have a full council to approve these goals um, we have uh, Councilor Ayers who had uh, left the council a couple weeks back and um, so I just want to vet that with the rest of the council if that is something that they want to do or or if we can press on and have the dialogue this evening? I think it's okay to press on with, uh, without filling Councillor Ayers' position. My, my question is whether you've been in contact with Councillor Hensley, whether it would be her pleasure to vote on this or not. She has uh, graciously sent me an email outlining what she has some opinions on, okay. and I have those changes noted here. Okay. Uh, to discuss um, right. along with whatever whatever other changes in verbiage you guys have. That's that's great. I just thought as a, as a, I, I know she had planned to be out of town this week, and I just uh, since these are council goals, I wanted to make sure everybody had their fingerprints on it. Perfect. Yeah. I appreciate that. So one of the um, first changes that was voiced was wording around uh, one of the bullet points under transportation and safety. Uh, pardon me, transportation, public safety, and public services. Um, the piece about develop uh, implementation plan for library and city hall. Um, I say we can change that to develop plan and execution of civic building slash library. That would help. Okay. Um, second change that was mentioned um, under community. Um, was the last bullet point um, the word maximize so the bullet point was maximize adopted community vision plan throughout city goals plans and communications uh, the word maximize was felt that it was too broad um, so I propose adding um, after the word uh, communications at the end um, that it be after communications Sorry, it would read, maximize adopted community vision plan throughout city goals, plans, and communications through prioritizing, planning, and implementing the concepts expressed in the, in the plan or in the community plan, the community vision plan. Sounds good to me. Into my two wordsmiths here on the left. Mm -hmm. can, can we say that in fewer words? Uh, well, I am open for <laughs> fewer words. But what, what are we trying to get to with the addition? Maybe that would help. Okay, what, my, what I'm trying to get to in this is we had a lot of great work done on our community vision plan. Right. I want us to see as we are working through the different goal pieces that we look to the plan, that as we're implementing pieces from that plan that we're labeling it as such that we are that it's kind of that it is guiding s some of our direction uh, over the course of the next couple of years um, in terms of projects how we prioritize those um, and what we if we are doing um, items in that plan that we are calling those out so that we know that we are making headway on on the community's vision plan well <coughs> okay uh, at the risk of, of wordsmithing on the fly here. Uh, maybe not maximize, it would be utilize the, the plan uh, in uh, city goals, well, uh, the community vision plan uh, in our city planning communications and uh, budgeting. Because what you're talking about is implementing the plan <coughs> is what we're talking about. Well, we are, but you know, you, you utilizing this plan as as a as as a guidance for other things when it fits. Right. And, and I think Mr. Baxter also has brought up 
the point of, of resources. Mm -hmm. but I, I think that that's a good point as well, that, 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 that the community vision plan all, also has to be realistic of, 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 of the resources that we have. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we can do that on the fly right here. We need to think about that some more, but uh, I see where you're going with it and I like that. But I'd, I'd, I'd like to have fewer words. Okay. I'll talk with Kim about fewer words. Are you going to wait then and jump to bring this back the yeah. next meeting so it's... Would you mind? Oh, no, I and, think that's And good Tracy idea. would be here yeah. too yeah. then. So yeah, we can, we'll yeah. tweak it. And, 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 the I, you need and to. Tim and I can get together and yeah. annoy okay. each other. And <laughs> um, I like this word. The, uh, I like this word. <laughs> Okay, then under transportation, uh, the transportation, public safety, and public services, um, bullet point number five, um, about the TSP, mm -hmm. uh, I propose changing it to uh, continue, well, it's stated here, develop strategy for implementing transportation system plan. Um, I'm proposing to change that to continue to utilize transportation system plan to strategically implement traffic enhancements that improve neighborhood safety and traffic concerns, upgrade access in and around Canby, and continue to support our community's growth. Word here, but I think it we, encompasses... We, we can take that meaning and turn it into yeah, a yeah. surgical Sizzle sentence. Yes. Okay. Any other thoughts, inputs on this to bring back next week or in two weeks for proper vetting or yeah. approval? Yeah. Yeah. And I just, I, you know, it's just, it's just me, but I just, it, it just would be neat to have the, me too. the, okay. the people who are on the council. Right. We're Absolutely. down to five now, but yeah. to have us, have us all here. So. Right. so I'm big fan. Yeah, big fan. What's that? One big happy family. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care to move this fast. Did you catch all that there, Kim? Yeah. So we'll table this for now and tweak and then bring it back. I'll talk with you and we'll go Tim and I have to have great lunch summit. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, whenever you're ready. Okay. Um, the next item we have is Ordinance 1383. This is also before you, or this is before you for second reading. This is authorizing a lease with Zimmer Ventures LLC for rental of property for Canby Area Transit. Thank you, Kim. Uh, so, uh, again, this is two weeks, or not, well, more than two weeks ago, I had this conversation about. So, this is about uh, leasing space over out by the Wil new Wilco building out on Sequoia to move cat. Canby Area Transit offices and a majority of their equipment out there for parking um, and freeing up space for them to functional, to be functional and also provide some room for um, the finance group to, to spread out a little bit as well. Um, am I leaving anything out, Mr. Mm, Ellis? No. Okay. Uh, I, I, I do want to say there were some uh, questions after the last meeting and uh, I think there were questions from the council, and I think those have been, I hope those have been answered. Um, I know we sent emails, um, Julie did, as did I to uh, the council, and um, I hope all those questions were answered. If not, uh, we can certainly try to uh, answer them now. Mm -hmm. I've, I've just got a, a simple question here that, that when, when this is, said and done and we, we have this in operation um, obviously the staff will be there but but during the evenings is that where our fleet will be then in that parking lot all except for the three larger buses and the three larger buses two will be at the transit center and one will be down at fleet okay. uh, the fleet down at the public works building basically all right yes and, and to flesh that out I think the understanding was eventually they're going to not only fill up the other offices potentially, but uh, uh, the actual landlord, but the buses themselves are going to find a home sure. that is more secure nearby. Yeah. I, what, what I didn't yeah, know was what we were doing with those large buses. Oh, okay, fair so, enough. So, fair enough. Yeah, we know that we, yeah, okay. this is still, 
we have a longer term need for gas yes, yes, in terms of a solution. And Julie and I have had a conversation uh, again last 30 days <laughs> about that, and we it's uh, it's been a long process to get um, to this point, and we've been working on top of finance for the last uh, five six years. So I think we know we've got a need that we're going to need to figure out long term solution for that, and this is a, a, a good. I think a good temporary fix for the time being. Yes, I have sir. a question. Maybe Julie could answer this. With the buses going to be down at the transit center overnight, are, do we have uh, surveillance cameras to watch the area for graffiti or you know damage? Anything like that? We do have surveillance cameras now. Okay. Yeah. Good question. Thank you. All right. Um, Kim, I believe we have a roll call vote on this. We did not have a motion. I'm sorry. I'm really excited to get going. <laughs> so I will take a motion to. Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I would. Uh, Tim, why don't you? You're better at that. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I would move ordinance number uh, 1383, an ordinance authorizing the city administrator to execute a lease agreement with Zimmer Ventures LLC for the rental of property for Canby Area Transit offices and parking and declaring an emergency. Second. Motion made by Councillor Parker, seconded by Councillor Ryder to approve Ordinance 1383, an ordinance authorizing the City Administrator to execute a lease agreement with Zimmer Ventures LLC for the rental of property for Canby Area Transit offices and parking and declaring an emergency. Councillor Coleman? Uh, yes. Councillor Dale? No. Councillor Parker? Yes. Councillor Ryder? Yes. Great. Thank you. Passes three to one. The next item we have is Ordinance 1384. This is also before you for second reading. It's committing PERS contribution stabilization reserve to be used to offset future PERS rate increases. And Greg, I, would you mind tackling the uh, the recap of this one sure thank you um, one of the things that we have uh, coming before us uh, in the future is increased PERS rates and uh, we have some unfunded liabilities and instead of trying to find that money every year uh, we're proposing that we actually have a set aside um, almost like a contingency but specifically for those PERS increases and so uh, we're asking that this money be set aside specifically for that need. Where is that money coming from that's going to be set aside? We will have to budget. I mean, that's will have to be budgeted. But uh, to have a specific set aside, you have to have something like this. You can't uh, just create a reserve fund without saying, here's what we're going to do with this money. So it will just have to be budgeted. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Is it fair to say, Mr. Ellis, that this is how we deal, as the media said, the can is being kicked down the road deferring payments, and what we're saying is we're going to put money in the savings account. When the can gets down there. For when we That's meet right. the can down the road. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's can I ask a question? Yes. Would it be reasonable that we could get uh, Kurt Schrader here and, and share some ideas? Because uh, I think there are some real solutions that can be pursued. Um, you don't have to be a rocket scientist, I don't believe, to make some real meaningful changes, some structural changes that can really improve the course that we're on. And I think um, you know, just some really common sense approaches, I think, can really make things a lot better in the future. So these be federal um, federal changes or yes, regulations? Uh, or at the chamber lunch, I had the opportunity to speak with Bill Kinemer, and he suggested that speak to Kurt Schrader. Okay. And so I was thinking, would that be a good opportunity to invite him and ask him questions and share some ideas? And I, I think that would be terrific. I've always, uh, my understanding was always limited to just it being a state issue, but if, if in fact there's a federal interconnect, it would be good. And it, it's, it would be nice to invite uh, the congressman here as well. But. Uh, to, to share with him, and we're lucky to have you on board with the understanding of some of these financial concepts. So, uh, yeah, our 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 future and our ability to control it uh, is out of our hands with PERS. I always thought it was limited to just the legislature. That's me too. But if there's if there's a federal component to this, yeah. you bet. Yeah. Well, one of the ideas, and I'll just share this real quick, is that since we're so dependent on 
the Federal Reserve buying Treasury bonds every month, mm -hmm. one of the ideas that I had is if if every working citizen, say, under age, uh, well, from about working age all the way up to, say, 55 years old, would buy Treasury zero coupon bonds consistent with their retirement age. And so you have a ton of money going into U.S. Treasuries every single month. And they're going to support your, they'll be there for you when you retire, but it's a constant source. So it's like you're getting all the citizens in the country that are working to fund the government. Well, isn't that the principle of Social Security, though? And, and that is all gone. That's what we did. We It was set aside. Well, this and is we a way spent of, it. of shoring up the system. And if you wanted to add a component to that, if you, say, added a stock market component like the S&P 500 by buying these deeply discounted treasury bonds, you're really insuring the investment. So that's the one of the ideas I'd like to... I think um, I think the idea is a good one. I think also that maybe um, if it's not a council meeting, maybe a um, maybe a work session, and maybe include our current state representatives for the city of Canby, uh, Alan Olson and Senator Olson, and Representative Kenemer to that conversation. And I think there are some state component pieces to it as well. Constitutional components. That too. Yeah. Maybe a bigger venue. <laughs> it, it could be just an overall greater town hall uh, piece. I know that uh, yeah. Yeah. the congressman's on, on break, I think, here shortly or is now. Is and, now. Um, or their next break uh, down the road here. But I think we're coming up on an election season for some of them as well. So yeah. we might be able to use that for... Uh, for conversation and get them on the front page of the campaign. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. All right, thank you, sir. That's a good suggestion. Um, great. So, I need a motion, thank you, Kim, uh, to approve our little Mr. Mayor, I move for ordinance number 1384 an ordinance committee PERS contribution stabilization reserve to be used to offset future PERS rate increases. Second, that. Motion made by Councilor Dale, second by Councilor Parker to approve Ordinance 1384 and Ordinance Committing PERS Contribution Stabilization Reserve to be used to offset future PERS rate increases. All those in favor? Roll call. Sorry, thank you. Thank Councilor you. Coleman? Yes. Councilor Dale? Yes. Councilor Parker? Yes. Councilor Ryder? Yes. Okay. Motion carries 4 0. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Council. Uh, new business uh, this evening. We do have a um, city council vacancy, and so Kim has drafted already um, a notice to go out um, to take application for the vacancy uh, with a deadline for August. So it'll be posted tomorrow. Deadline would be August 30th, uh, 2013, uh, at 5 p.m. And so I'm just looking for a consensus to advertise this until then. Uh, we will look to conduct interviews on September 18th uh, due to the fact that the agenda on the 4th is very full with the Fred Meyer project. Um, and we don't know how long that will potentially go for that evening. Um, and well, that it might be one way of, of sifting through our candidates to see how many of them stay through the entire <laughs> meeting. <laughs> <laughs> make them, make yeah, them, yeah, shows see them, see make them more yeah. tested. Uh -huh. um, I'm thinking more of us than I am our <coughs> candidates. You know, we can maybe pose that as a question to them. Uh, and that uh, I will, we did have two applicants that applied uh, back in January, and that um, I will contact them that they resubmit their applications if they're still interested. Okay. So, just to, I guess a consensus that that's the direction we want to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Perfect on that. Um, great. Second, uh, or sorry, city administrators, business and staff reports. I have none, Mayor. Thank none, you. Sir. Okay. Second opportunity for any citizen input that uh, would like to be given at this point this evening. Seeing no rushing, we'll go to action review. Okay. You have directed staff to pursue options for a civic building and library as outlined by the mayor. You, uh, resolution 1171 will be brought back at the August 21st 
meeting with revised language to the goals. You've adopted Ordinance 1383 and 1384, and you've directed staff to advertise for the City Council vacancy until August 30th, 2013, with interviews to take place at the September 18th Council meeting. Great. Thank you, Kim. Uh, we do have uh, a rather extensive executive session. Mr. Mayor, I move we go into executive session pursuant to ORS 192.660, parent 2, parent I, performance evaluation of a public officer, and ORS 192.660, parent 2, parent D, labor negotiations, and finally ORS 192.660, parent 3, labor negotiations. Thank you, sir. We'll take a second, please. Second. All right, motion made by Councilor Dale, second by Councilor Ryder to uh, adjourn into executive session. Uh, on that note, or sorry, motion. Do you need your... All right. There's an informative uh, paragraph. I think. Oh, you have to read your paragraph. That's right. I, I do not have my binder with my paragraph. Do you have Backing us up. Like read as is Tim. Thank you, Tim. Uh, executive session announcement. So the city council will now recess this meeting to meet in executive session for the purpose of describing um, labor negotiations and performance of a public officer. Uh, the executive session is held to uh, held pursuant to uh, ORS 192.660 uh, parentheses two parentheses H pending litigation. ORS 192.660 Parenthesis 2, parenthesis I, Performance Evaluation of a Public Officer, ORS 192.660, parenthesis 2, parenthesis D, Labor Negotiations, and ORS 192.660, parenthesis 3, Labor Negotiations. Um, and this will allow the Council to meet in executive session to discuss those topics. Only representatives of the news media and designated staff shall be allowed to attend the executive session. The council will adjourn to the city hall conference room to hold its executive session. Representative, representatives of the news media are specifically directed to not report on any of the deliberations during the executive session, except to state the general subject of the session as previously announced. No decision may be made in executive session. At the end of the session, we may reconvene the meeting in the city hall conference room and conduct any further business that needs to be taken care of. With that, I will take a motion to go into exec session. Thank you. you did. We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 4-0. Thank you, Camby. Good night.